Gustavo Rodriguez, whose pen name is Garincha, is a cartoonist who's been creating cartoons for 20 years. Came to the U.S. from Cuba in 2005 and will share some experiences of what it's like to draw cartoons for two different worlds, Hispanic Cuban readers and American readers. I believe that's the end of Garincha's intro. Where are you, Garincha? Come up here. Hi, my name is um, Gustavo Rodriguez, or, or Garrincha. I worked, uh, I, I was a cartoonist in Cuba for almost 20 years, and I came here in 2005. Uh, as you can imagine, doing good editorial cartooning in Cuba is almost impossible, given the fact that the media belongs to the state, is run by the state, and the editorial uh, guidelines are pretty much, the, are exactly the same, the party guideline, guidelines. It's not unusual to find uh, in a publication uh, an editor or any person holding a key position uh, is a, that that person doesn't come from a journalist background or anything. It's instead of a, he or she is a reliable party member who makes sure that everything is in order. But Cuban cartoonists, at least uh, until I left, that's what was happening. We cannot have our pockets of persistence to do other types of cartoons that we uh, sent to an international contest. And we drew cartoons like this one, which deals with uh, universal themes. And it's not exactly the guy cartoon as we know it. It could be uh, sometimes it overlaps into illustration. But it was a good thing because uh, if you had the material, you could work in large format, and uh, after that, you could see your work in a catalog. You compare notes because your work was by other other artists. It was a good uh, it was a good thing. It was a good training to get away from the traditional uh, cartooning in, in, in Cuba. Or you could draw things like that, which is more close. It's, it's closer to the to the guy cartoon, but you can use it as a reference of uh, food habits, I don't know. Um, uh, this one, it's, uh, you, can, you could use it as a reference of aging gracefully. Uh, actually, this one was, I did this one uh, as a general humor cartoon, gut cartoon, but eventually ended up uh, being used as an illustration for Creativity in kids, something like that. But you can use it as um, arts, uh, adults, aging gracefully. I don't know. <laughs> and of course, the economic illusions are present in all types of cartooning. This one was made way before uh, the crisis, but I think that it's still valid in, in these times. If you can use it as a reference of one uh, percent of whatever. And the economics, you know, they have been the same through the years, through the ages. Uh, it doesn't change much. But uh, I was telling you, drawing good editorial cartooning in Cuba, uh, in my opinion, is almost impossible, given the ideological charge, environment, and one-sided politics. But if you drew things like this, you were covered. You didn't have any problem. <laughs> you decided to do By the way, this, I believe this one is um, my first W. Bush that I, that, that I drew. Uh, sometimes you can draw things that you agree on, and uh, you got the uh, the editors were happy with you as long as you portray the United States bad, the rest of the uh, Cuba world or the rest of the world good. It was a good job, young man. That's the attitude. Um, when I came when I came to, uh, to the states, I knew that maybe uh, I. I had to spend a lot of time without uh, drawing because uh, I had to start from, from, from scratch, start from zero. And everything that I did before in Cuba maybe uh, wouldn't matter uh, much. And I had to take uh, a job so I couldn't uh, spend much time drawing at all. Uh, I started a blog, and I put in that blog all kinds of uh, stuff. Gag cartoons, sex cartoons, political cartoons, sketches, comic strips, illustrations. And Sometimes I, I posted, posted things like this. Uh, this is a 
a very peculiar sight in Miami, at least, something that called my attention. You see in a corner in a traffic light uh, junction, you, it's very common to see a Latino guy. Most of the time he's a man. Sometimes he's a woman selling flowers, fruits uh, to the drivers parked in the, the light. And if you feed from him, there was this guy, usually uh, an, um, an American guy. I don't know why. Uh, with all the appearances of being homeless, sometimes drunk, holding a sign, asking for money. And it called my attention. It wasn't an opinion. I wasn't offering any opinion at all. And I posted it in my blog. And I received a couple of, of emails that were uh, kind of supporting, hey, that's true. Do you know where uh, I also see that? In 22nd Street and Flagler. And in Broward, I see that all the time. And there's the same scene in, uh, somewhere else. But after that, I received a couple of emails that start, what do you mean by that? Usually when you get an email that says, what do you mean by that? It means that probably is on the way. And the, they said, what do you mean by that? Do you think that uh, Latinos are the only hardworking people here in America? That the Americans are a bunch of uh, drunks and low lives and bums and, and all that? I said, no, I didn't mean that. I just drew what I, what I saw, and apparently a lot of people saw that too. But while I was trying to be polite, trying to reply to, to all those emails, I started to, uh, to get different type uh, of emails with the same pattern. What do you mean by that? Mm -hmm. And uh, but they said, uh, don't you know that there are many successful Latino men and women in the corporate world? Don't you think that the only thing that a Latino can, uh, can amount to is uh, selling fruits in the, in the corner? And I said, whoa, I didn't, I didn't mean that either. But uh, I, I took a step back and I started uh, to realize that that's what happens when you put your work out there. You have to expect uh, critics, criticism, and all kind of stuff, and opinions are supposed to be flowing freely, something that was new for me compared to what I had to go through in, in, in Cuba. And uh, I, I, I decided that it, it was a good thing. And, uh, of course, that made me think once again, that what the hell am I doing doing this kind of jobs? So I had to go back to cartooning as soon uh, as possible. And I also posted, of course, I started drawing about Fidel, something that I, that I have never been able to, to do in Cuba. And I drew this cartoon because I found in, in, in Miami a lot of Cubans that uh, when they came from Cuba, they said uh, that they failed to, 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 to see the connection between politics and their situation. They said, I'm not a political immigrant. I'm a, uh, I am an economic Immigrant. I said, really? So who do you think that uh, put the Cuban economy in that, in that shape in, in the first place? They didn't see that connection. And some of them went as far as saying, you know, Fidel was not responsible for that because he has his hands tied and his consultant. And uh, I had to draw about it. And of course, I have uh, had a lot of feedback. That a figure in the center, by the way, is uh, my representation, my version of a Republic of Cuba, uh, which it's traditionally has been depicted as a voluptuous, very healthy woman with the red French hat and all that. And as you can see, I'm a little bit nasty to her. Um, and this one was also posted in my blog. I didn't submit it to any publication. And it deals with the fact that the, the fear that the Cuban government has always felt about free access to information, including internet. And in those days, it was a big debate about uh, if, Cuba, if Cubans should have access to internet. In my opinion, a bunch of Cubans will start downloading videos about puppies and cats <laughs> and Kim Kardashian gossips. But it's true that uh, it's not the magic solution that many people think. Uh, but it's true that uh, it will be changed uh, a lot of lives. And this one actually was submitted to the, to the El Nuevo Herald, one of the publications that I regularly contribute. It says, Cuban exiles sent more than $2 billion to the island in 2000 and 2011. And it shows uh, Raul Castro in the left and Fidel, or Castro 2.0, like I call him, and <laughs> Castro 1.0. And, and it's funny because they're, they're lighting a candle to the exile that they spent so much time through all these years demonizing day after day after day, the exiles. Uh, those Cubans that dared to leave uh, the revolutionary paradise, they are the, the worst of the worst, but they cannot live without their money. So it's funny. But uh, uh, when I started contributing to the, 
to the Memorial Herald, I decided that they welcome all uh, Cuban-related uh, cartoons, but I decided that there were national issues that I, need, that I needed uh, uh, to touch. This one was uh, drawn during uh, Occupy Wall Street when we, at least I, started hearing more and more every day about the 90, 99 and 1%. This was when Osama, when the Navy SEALs killed Osama. And we all remember, it says, you're Lieutenant America now, that's the standard on words. <laughs> because by the time the standard of words downgraded the, the rates, uh, Captain America film was opening at the time. Uh, Joe Paterno, you might remember that. Uh, this cartoon, at the time that I was drawing this, I felt that this idea must have been done thousands of times about U.S. Congress, about other Congress of the world, because this one was uh, done during the gridlock, one of the many, but uh, the gridlock of, uh, about uh, the debt ceiling debate. But I felt so strongly about it, and I love the capital that I, that I drew that I decided to go with it anyway. So. <laughs> uh, this was, one, uh, was done when the Trevor Martin... Uh, killing, uh, maybe if you remembered, and the penchant for uh, for a lot of people in Florida, and Jeff Parker can relate to that. Not that he, not that he has any guns, but he knows that the, a lot of people in Florida they think they can resolve all their problems using guns. So that's the idea of justice. And of course, we all remember when nobody knew what Gaddafi was. <laughs> Uh, this, was, uh, w uh, this one was uh, drawn uh, because of uh, Aurora movie shootings. And of course, I, I, I drew my, my Batman, of course. But uh, I decided to go with this to send it to the, to the newspaper. And of course, everybody remembers when Michelle Bachman was <laughs> making a lot of uh, Republican members uh, very uncomfortable with the things she was saying. She was a delight. And this one, of, uh, this one says, of course the souls are fresh, ma'am. This is an election year. <laughs> and I guess that you can't recycle this cartoon every four years or something like that. And um, there's, a funny, uh, there's a funny thing with, 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 with this and all the caricatures that I, that I did. I never did caricatures in, in, in Cuba. I, I, well, maybe I did one or two, but it was not my thing. That's one of the things that I started to get into when I came to the States. But as a caricaturist, you can leave the, the figure, the person that you're drawing, just alone. But as an editorial cartoonist, you feel the urge to put something to editorialize, to have an opinion, to put something funny in it. So I decided to go with the pistol and the with a gun with a woman leg, like, just like I did with the rush, that I could have left the rush like a big balloon, but I couldn't resist and put uh, the plug and uh, the sign that says, don't pull out, <laughs> something like that. Uh, two quick things. I wanted to show you some illustrations that I have done that, uh, that, that are not exactly editorial cartooning, but uh, uh, explain a little bit the fact that uh, the, the whole learning process that was for me coming to the States, a, um, a new country, which, by the way, um, I think that uh, the job that I, had, that I had to take when I came here sent me traveling all around, uh, around the States, and I learned a lot about, about the country. And I, one of the things that I found out is that the more that I traveled, I found out it was the last that I, that I knew about, uh, um, about the, the, country, the country in general, because everybody outside the United States, they think they have America figured out. They have a fixed idea of what... Of, of what America is and Americans are. Just like we think that the French are all the same or we, th we think that the Cubans are all the same, maybe you think that I'm a good salsa dancer, which I'm not, <laughs> or that I'm a huge baseball fan, which I'm not. Sorry to disappoint you, but I'm a football fan. What can I say? But uh, uh, I, I knew that, I, that if I wanted to become a, an American citizen, which I eventually became, I needed to learn about the, the country, but also, if I wanted to be an editorial cartoonist dealing with the national issues, I needed to learn about the culture, about the history, about, about everything. And I think that both things helped me, maybe as a citizen and as a, as a professional. 
And that, that was a good thing that I decided, I was, at some point I was so embarrassed that I didn't know anything. Everything that I knew, I had to throw it out of the window and I had to, uh, it w was another first uh, start. Two quick things before, uh, uh, before I finish. These are basically uh, illustrations. When I started cartooning, I started, uh, and I had access to technology, information, everything. Uh, it helped me at some point uh, trying some other types of, uh, of, 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 of graphics. And uh, children illustration. It was. Uh, <laughs> and. Um, some people, some people tell me, isn't it too late for you to, to start? Maybe, I'm, I'll be 50 this year, but uh, I'm having a great time. So two quick things. Um, I don't regret a single, uh, a single day coming to, to the States because it meant a lot to me uh, as a professional and as, and as a person. And I think that I was uh, more prepared to deal with the fact that I had to send cartoons to American newspapers, or to American readers and also uh, Spanish-speaking readers, which sometimes you cannot draw the same cartoon. The cultural references are totally different. Uh, for instance, for a Spanish-speaking person, the phrase or the concept, uh, food in the mouth, doesn't mean anything. So you cannot draw anything like that. A man of many hats doesn't mean anything. It doesn't make any sense. So you, can, you have to avoid those type of things. And uh, the last thing is, honestly, guys, I don't know what's happening when Fidel dies, honestly. So thank you very much. Oh, Garincha, thank you. Wow, those gorgeous drawings, you know, amazing color, and uh, that's exactly why I'm against immigration. <laughs>